A particular method of treating this fascia has developed called fascial manipulation. And these are slides, many of them from Antonio Stecco, a medical doctor who is doing a lot of research in the fascial world and is connected with the University of Padova in Italy. So the Research Congress, there's been two of them, there's going to be another one coming up, where world authorities have made a definition of what is fascia. And they said it's the connective tissue that permeates the whole body. Now, here's a very interesting study by a researcher in connective tissue, Helen Langevin from the University of Vermont. And in this study, she took chronic low back patients versus patients with no back pain. And what she found was an actual increase in this fascia. So only the people with the chronic low back pain had the increased fascia. And she, she made the comment that increased thickness and disorganization of connective tissue layers may be an important and very much neglected factor in the cause of human low back pain. Now, there's been a tremendous increase in research in the fascial world. So here you have fascial manipulation for chronic shoulder pain, for your knee, patella tendinopathy, for ankle problems, and many, many articles on the fascial system. So what I usually do with a, a patient is I usually put my finger on their arm or their thigh, and I say, I'm pressing through your skin, I'm pressing through the superficial fascia until I get way down deep, and now I'm seeing, does this deep fascia glide over the muscle because we're realizing that unless there is this gliding you're going to suffer with pain and lack of function. So here are some views of the fascial system. You have the arm, the anterior arm, the thigh. You can see how everything is covered with fascia. As a matter of fact, here's a photo of deep fascia covering a muscle. Now there's what they call, for example, compartment syndrome. You actually have runners that suddenly have to stop because of their agonizing pain. And they realize that the fascia has decreased and is shortened so that the muscle, when it expands, doesn't have the ability to actually expand and it affects the circulation. So what does science do today? They actually do what they call a fasciotomy they free up the fascia to allow the muscles to work. So look, here's a perfect view of deep fascia that slides over the muscle. And in between this deep fascia and the muscle is loose connective tissue allowing this normal gliding. You ever look at a chicken? You ever look at your chicken and see that glistening membrane? That's the first layer of the fascia on top of the muscle. It's called the epimysium. So you have the deep fascia gliding over this loose connective tissue on the epimysium. So if we were to look at a diagram, every muscle is covered by epimysium. And every group of fibers is covered by another layer of fascia called perimysium. And then every single muscle fiber in your body is covered by fascia. This is an amazing electron microscopic view showing where they remove the fibers so every fiber in your body is literally going through a tunnel of fascia. And these fascia, which anatomists for years would basically just cut away and just think of it as this white stuff hanging around the body, has found to have a lot, have a lot of functions. For example, here's a study that found out that if they were to remove the fascia, you would immediately lose 30% of the force of your muscle contraction because the force of the contraction goes not only through the muscles, but it goes through the fascia. So muscles can't even function normally unless the fascia is normal. But the biggest finding is that the fascia is also considered a sensory organ, because in the fascia are something called muscle spindles. Now, you know, when you move a muscle, your brain says, OK, muscle move. At the same time, there is instantaneously, there are fibers coming from the brain that go directly to these spindle cells. And as you move the muscles, the spindles are reporting back to your central nervous system how the muscle is working. What is the amount of tone in that muscle as the muscle 
is functioning. So it's really important that these spindle cells are functioning and signaling back to the brain. Well, you know, we questioned this, and we went to a, an authority by the name of Siegfried Mensa. As a matter of fact, I have permission to use this slide from Siegfried. Siegfried is the world's leading expert on muscle pain and neurophysiology. He's written more papers on muscle than anyone has ever lived. And we said, can Siegfried, can, or Dr. Mensa, can fascial adhesions have an adverse effect on spindle cells? And this is what he said. Structural disorders of the fascia can surely distort the information sent by the spindles to the central nervous system and thus could interfere with proper coordinated movement. So they call them muscle spindle cells. They should really call them fascial spindle cells because they're in those layers around the muscles that we just showed you. So basically, the whole concept here is you're supposed to have sliding. And this is an elbow, for example. And you have three layers of deep fascia, and each of them is supposed to glide in order for this elbow to work normally. So we actually are a sliding system. And what they have found is that the sliding may not occur because there's some, this lubricant that's in between this, these tissues that glide may not be functioning right, and it's called hyaluronic acid. So what do we have, what's our job? Our job is to evaluate you, to check you in all ranges of motion and test your muscles and test your whole system and find out is there fascia that has to be restored. And that, you remember when we examined you yesterday, that we had you stretch and move in all different areas and asked you where is the pain. Well, Luigi Stecco, a physical therapist, who for the last 35 years has been studying fascia, came up with the concept of dividing the fascial system into units. So here's your hip and here's your knee and there's a whole unit here between the hip and the knee. So there is a relationship between connective tissue and acupuncture points. And the greatest amount of connective tissue areas is where the most important acupuncture points happen to be. So why isn't the tissue able to glide? Because in between the deep fascia and the muscle is something called hyaluronic acid. And they have found by using pressure on the right particular point and establish, increasing the temperature, the entangled hyaluronic acid becomes disentangled and you move from the gel to the fluid phase and you have a normal gliding system. Now, there are points in the body and these points you're not even aware of. They can be distant from where your pain is. For example, what if some people have ankle pain and plantar fasciitis pain, and we feel a point that's designated because of a certain movement they're not able to do, that it's increased thickness, it doesn't glide, therefore the spindle cells aren't working, therefore the muscle fibers are not recruited, Therefore, there's an abnormal vector the way the muscles are working, and eventually it's affecting the articulation of the ankle, and eventually you may have ankle pain or plantar fasciitis type of pain. So here actually is uh, Luigi Stecco working on a particular point. He's working in the back of your hamstring. Now, this was all evaluated. He's not there for just because he feels like being there. This was evaluated by testing. And maybe this patient has a low back pain and needs treatment here. Or maybe they have pain behind their knee or, or down their leg. And that could be one of the points that has to be treated in your particular case. So what's very important is today that we understand a few things and that when we work on you, sometimes we cause a little inflammation. And sometimes you're going to have increased symptoms in the next day or two after we treat you. But usually by the third or fourth day, you should be feeling much better.